Welcome. My name is Cameron Moffat, and you are watching Choices. On this show, I interview healthcare practitioners and discuss with them the choices they offer you for your healthcare. Recently, the awareness of the potential devastating effects of concussions rose dramatically when, in 2011, Canadian hockey star Sidney Crosby was forced to sit out of 41 games of the season, including the Stanley Cup playoffs. More recently, the National Post ran an article that quoted Dr. Charles Tater, a neurosurgeon from Toronto, as saying that there are approximately 200,000 concussion cases in Canada alone each year. He went on to further state that parents, players, and coaches need to be aware of the red flag seen with, with concussions. And lastly, he warned that parents and coaches need to be very vigilant of any child who has had a head impact as the symptoms of a concussion are often delayed. More recently, the federal health minister, Rona Ambrose, announced that her government, through a new initiative, was funding the diagnosis, prevention, and also the treatment of concussions amongst our youth. Now, with me today at Choices, I have Jenna Howe, a certified Bowen Health therapist, and through her clinic, Regeneration, has treated successfully numerous cases of concussions. Welcome to the show, Jenna. Thank, Thank you for you. coming on. Thank you, Cameron. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, I understand you've got a, a volunteer coming in. Yes. And you're going to demonstrate a little later in the show on how you actually work on concussions. Yes. Good. I've got Jesse here from the VLOX Rugby Club. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Before we get into that, maybe you can explain to us uh, what Bowen therapy is and why it works well with concussions. Okay. Bowen therapy is a neuromuscular therapy. It's hands-on. It's a gentle application on precise points of the body we work with the muscle bundles, tendons, uh, nerve bundles, and the fascia, which is the connective tissue that holds everything together. Okay. We work with, like I said, precise points of the body in a gentle application. Works really well for concussions because we're increasing the nerve flow, the, the blood flow, it's gentle, there's no manipulations. So for people who might be cautious of having a harsh manipulation, um, there's absolutely none of that. So it allows the relaxation, it adheres to the rest and weight model of current treatment as well, okay. so that they can address their symptoms while they're still doing their, their rest that their neurologist or their doctor or anybody else might be encouraging. So Jenna, when you say there's no manipulation, you mean there's no joint movement? Yes, that's okay. correct. And that, that can be, I guess, in the case of a concussion, fairly jarring? Is that why Bowen stays away from that? It depends. It depends on the person. Bowen just does not have that as a part of its, as part of its model. Okay. So it's just not even, it's not even something that we do. So it's just very different from chiropractic or other therapies. Mm -hmm. So the therapy itself is a gentle therapy. Okay. Um, we take breaks, as you'll see in the demo later, uh, mm -hmm. pauses, which help to deepen um, the process. You give the body a little bit of information, new neuromodel new neurological messages, sure. then you allow the break in order for the body to actually absorb and, and interpret those messages yeah. before you move on to the next area and so on and so forth. I think that's common with, with most therapies that honor the body's ability to heal itself. I know as in my case of my training with, as an osteopath, that's something that you have to let the body uh, digest what you've just done. And I guess in the case of a concussion, that would be very important to it's not overload it. Yeah, it's extremely important um, because there is that uh, rest time that, they, that the individual should have okay. and then Bowen just helps to sort of push that process along. Okay. Um, oftentimes concussions can resolve themselves between seven and nine days. Oh, okay. um, I see people who, have, who are suffering longer than that, sometimes uh, weeks, months or years. Okay. Um, I also see people sort of on an acute stage so freshly concussed is a sort of what I like to say okay. as well. Now let's talk about yeah. that. When is the best time for someone to seek out your type of treatment in the event of a, a head impact or an outright diagnosis of concussion? I prefer to see someone at about the 24 to 48 hour mark. That's um, soon. Going back to what you'd said in the introduction where there can be a delay in symptoms. So mm -hmm. what we want is sort of to make sure that all the symptoms are there. Okay. It, which is ideal. Okay. I have worked on people immediately after a hit, and I've worked with people 24 hours later, 48 hours later. Is there one that's an ideal? I usually like the 24 to 48 hours, okay. um, just so that their body's had enough time to go, okay, this is what's going on, these are the symptoms in, in their completion, and then I, we just work on that. But like I've said, I've seen people who have been suffering for a week, two weeks, 
four months, two years. Um, Let's talk a little bit about the symptoms that, that you see uh, people coming into your office with and also maybe what parents can be aware of of what their children or their fellow players are showing up in the way of symptoms. Uh, what do you commonly see? The most common is a headache, uh, nausea, dizziness, okay. uh, an overall foggy feeling. So they just feel unclear, just generally foggy. Sometimes people will say, I just don't feel like I'm even in myself. Their body might feel groggy. Some people have uh, sleep issues, hearing difficulties, and light and hearing, sorry, light and um, sound sensitivity ah, okay. uh, are, are a part okay. of it as well. It can vary. On my intake list, there are uh, you know, a dozen, two dozen different kinds of symptoms that they're going through. But those are the ones that I would see most often when they come in. Okay. Head in headaches, dizziness, nausea, foggy feeling. Okay. Now, have you noticed any one particular or a group of sports that tend to have more concussions than others? Um, well, I work with the Saanich Braves and with the Velox Rugby Club, so I see a lot of hockey and, and rugby players. Okay. Uh, but honestly, basketball is a high concussion sport. Um, cheerleading is a high concussion sport. Cheerleading. cheerleading. I didn't realize it was that vicious. Yeah, it can be. The girls get dropped a lot. There's a lot of knees to the head, head to the floor, uh, things like that. Uh, with all the throwing, and so it's usually for them the the, the being dropped on the Even floor. The drop. Uh, okay. Baseball, football, of course, and we've had that and through the media, and soccer. Sure, and I guess even just playing, just, just out playing. playing on the weekends. You've yeah. got kids who are tobogganing, snowboarding, you've got people uh, just roughing, roughing around, sure. uh, you know, throwing themselves around the basement, that kind of thing. So. Okay, now I'm just getting a cue from our cameraman. We are about ready to take a break okay. and, and have Jesse come in and we'll set things up. Folks, we're going to take a few minutes to uh, rearrange the furniture, and when we come back, uh, Jen is going to demonstrate how she actually does this technique. We're we'll back in just a moment. Welcome back. We've got everything all set up, and Jenna is now going to demonstrate on Jesse uh, how this type of work is applied to the cases of uh, concussions. And uh, let's see what happens. Uh, Thank you. Jenna, go ahead. So oftentimes when we've got somebody coming in, uh, they'll be coming in for a full body treatment plus area of injury or issue. So today we'll just be demonstrating sort of the primary areas that we'd be working on. Um, as I said before, the precise points of the body. What accesses the nervous system. So with Bowen, what we have are a set of protocols. We call it the basic relaxation moves. And as you can see, it's a gentle pressure, but it is, it is pressure. So you will feel like it's an, like a, almost like a pressure point, but we okay. are moving the muscle and the fascia. Well, I just noticed that you're actually rolling over the muscle. So you're stimulating yes. it or you're trying to calm it down? So what we do is we invoke the stretch reflex. Mm -hmm. So when you find the spine, so in this particular set of moves, I'm looking for the spine to landmark. Okay. Then I find the muscle belly. Right. I'm also assessing tension differences from one side of the body to the other. And will you commonly see that with a concussion? Sometimes up and through here, this will be a, a real tender spot, okay. almost consistently, especially okay. if they've got some neck issues along with their concussion. All right. So we find the muscle belly, then we come over to the side of the muscle belly and just apply like a little, a little pressure. Okay. So what that does is it sends that message to the brain to say, guess what? we want you to relax. Right, right. And as you sort of roll over top, you're really just relaxing over top and it just releases it. Then the body goes, oh, okay, I want to be relaxed. Sure. Comes down. And this is where we take a break. So in Bowen, we call it cook time. Okay. Uh, when we're dealing with concussions, we, we wait a little bit longer. So maybe three minutes then three minutes. before okay. we move on to the next set Would of moves. Would you do both sides at the same time or do you do one side? Yeah, we often do left side, right side. Okay. So I'm standing on the opposite side that would normally stand, but uh, you would go, I would go sort of here and then here, and then we'd go up here and then over there. So the right. basic setup for the upper body procedures is this four precise spots. Okay. So after we take our break, we're coming over and then we work around the scapula, which everyone loves anyway, mm -hmm. regardless of, of why they're in sure. <laughs> for a treatment. And from here, again, we're finding just sort of where the muscle the muscle sort of attaches underneath the mm -hmm. scapula. The scapula will move around. Sure. And then we come down and we just, we call it boomerang. 
So for the viewers, then you're actually working right around the edge of the scapula. Yeah. The so blade. this is the edge of her scapula here. Yes. Yeah. So I pull. We call it slack. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm going down to sort of uh, connective tissue, mm -hmm. and then pulling the skin down. Right. And then we come up, pull it down, and come up. So you're down. working also on the fascia then as well, aren't yes. you? Yes. Yeah. So for those of you that don't know what the fascia is, the fascia is connective tissue that holds the entire body together, and it's actually stronger than bone. Uh, so when Jenna's working on the fascia, it's having quite a neurological um, signal to the brain to start relaxing, not just the area you're working on, but there will also be a sort of a general relax. Yes, it's yes. not just that area, is it? Yeah, oh, it's, cool. uh, there's often times where if you're working with somebody up here, they may actually feel it down and through here, okay. depending on the fascial line, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. or just depending on their muscle tension. So right. there are times where you could work up here, but they'll feel it down here feel because down everything's there. connected. Right. And this is why when someone comes in for a concussion, I always treat the entire body as well. Oftentimes, especially with an athlete or an accident, they've injured other areas of the body sure, as exactly. well. Exactly, it's not just one little spot. Uh, how long are your treatments, generally? Generally, um, anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes, sometimes up to an hour. If okay. I'm working with someone who's got other stuff going on, knees and shoulders and hips and low backs, there might be some other specific procedures that we put in on top of the basic relaxation okay. moves. Uh, when I do my concussion work, it's often 45 minutes approximately for the first treatment. And when I see them for follow-up treatments, um, sometimes, again, depending on the individual, it might only be a, a 20 or 30-minute follow-up follow session. Okay. All right. Okay. So, so we let it cook a little bit we now. Let, we let it cook. Uh, <laughs> so now go? I'm going to go ask Jesse to roll onto her back. So at this point, um, again, when I'm working um, the entire body, I would start back down there and then move my way up. Okay. So again, for today, we're just working upper body. Okay. And from here, then I'm working at releasing the neck. Uh, okay. So gentle moves in and around the neck. So these, um, is that the, um, the uh, SCM muscle that you're working there? That That's the, this is the SCM here, which I'll be working on next. We've got the scalenes underneath. Right. So we have the SCM here, the scalenes underneath. Okay. We're working here, we're working with that upper trapezius, so we're releasing uh, that base of the neck okay. there. Okay. Then we come to the occipitals, and we release the occipitals as they attach, sort of where they attach up into the skull. So the occipital spokes are the muscles right at the back of your brain, right at the back of the, um, the cranium, and they attach basically your skull onto the back of your neck, the suboccipital muscles. This is a point where most people come in will say, I, my head hurts like right here. Right there. So where that attaches. Okay. So again, we'll let that, we'll let that rest. So it's cooking, and then I'll work and release, again, the spinal muscles at the back. And again, oftentimes I'm looking for what the response is like from the muscles from the one side to the other. Yeah. And oftentimes, I mean, there's been times where I've asked somebody, what side did you get hit on? Because I can tell from the re resistance in their neck sure. that they got hit from the, from the one side. And then it, I can feel the tension sometimes either on the other side or that side. So I can often tell so what you're also, kind of hit. You're actually dealing with a little bit of whiplash then at that point too, yes. aren't you? Yeah, sure. absolutely. Okay. So once I've set that up, then I'm looking at the actual uh, protocol that we do for the concussion treatment. So from there, again, I'm setting everything up and I'm just all very gentle, light moves. Right. It almost seems like I'm doing nothing and I do prepare my clients <laughs> to, to kind of walk out of the office going, I'm <laughs> not sure what, what she that, do? yeah, yes, what yes. was that about? But often though, in the cases of anything acute, you need that subtle, gentle work. You can't be hammering away on the muscles. Exactly. It won't work. And they're already in, in shock. So this is consistently and reliably bringing the body out of shock. Okay. And right. uh, bringing it into the parasympathetic phase so that their body can properly heal. So I'm sure you get asked this all the time, but how many treatments would I need if I had a concussion coming to see you? On it yeah, it depends, it depends on the person. If, if you had your concussion Friday, I'd like to see you Sunday. Okay. And you're probably only going to need one, but I'll request two because I okay. think a follow-up is always good. That's wonderful. Especially, um, you know, sometimes a little headache will, will kind of linger. Not yeah. always, but uh, okay. I think two is good for that. Okay. Um, but there's some people who just need the one and that's it. When I'm dealing with somebody who's had more chronic issues, um, weeks, months, years, you're looking at anywhere from 
four to 12 treatments, depending on the severity of their symptoms, right. what other injuries they might have had, and, uh, and what's been going on for them. You know, okay. if they have a stressful life, if they're still working, some people are off work, some people aren't. Right. So that affects it as well. Sure. So just to finish up, I'll just show you here. So at this point, I ask um, the clients to place a knuckle just lightly in between their teeth. So I've relaxed the SCM muscle, the attachment here and up through here. Right. And then I gently prop open the, the jaw so that when we're accessing the nervous system that runs through the joint here. And you're doing the same thing over the, the nerve tract yep. and releasing the fascia? And release. Wonderful. And then I always finish off with a cranial release, uh, which almost always puts them all to sleep. <laughs> sure. Cranial means just uh, skull, folks. Yeah. Well, we're almost running out of time. Yep. That so that's very interesting. <laughs> so how have you found, uh, Jesse, have you found that your treatments are progressing and you're improving? Yes, very much so. I actually don't know what I would do without Jenna, to say the least. Okay. <laughs> all right. As a student. Okay. Jenna, I'd like to thank you for coming on to the show and uh, sharing with us this knowledge. I mean, it's certainly very, um, very useful, and I hope you don't mind me speaking for both of us when I say that I'm sure you also feel, like I do, that it's important that parents and coaches know how to look for uh, the symptoms of a concussion and also where to go for treatment. Absolutely. That's, that's equally important. I mean, we don't want our children running around, um, you know, with long-term um, symptoms of a concussion. Absolutely. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Uh, on behalf of myself and the crew here at Choices, thank you for coming and watching. Uh, coming up soon on the show is an interview I've done with uh, Dr. Rion Blue. She is the author of Vitamin K2 and the Calcium Paradox. And for anyone that's interested in bone health and bone density and also ca uh, cardiovascular uh, health, this will be a show that I think you'll find quite informative. Uh, as well, mark on your calendars, uh, February 22nd, the uh, gluten-free uh, Festival is coming to Victoria, and I'll be presenting at that show a discussion on uh, food allergies, uh, food intolerances, and digestive health and what to do about it. So once again, thank you for showing, uh, for, thank you for coming, and thank you, Jenna, it's been a pleasure. Thanks thank again. You, thank you, Jesse, for your body, it's greatly <laughs> appreciated. And take care. Until we see you next time, stay healthy.